Hey guys, this is Terry here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing networking. We're going to look at how to optimize your ping and latency as well as throughput in any of the games that you guys are playing today. Um, let's get right into it. So right here we're looking at our different connection uh, types. Um, and what you're going to want to make sure you have enabled if you're running protocol version or IPv4 or protocol version 4 is we're going to want internet protocol version 4 selected. If you're going to be running IPv6, you're going to want IP Internet Protocol version 6 enabled. Um, the rest of it, besides maybe QRS, Q, sorry, QoS, uh, you'll want disabled. Uh, QoS, you'll know if you have it set up, you'll have to set it up through your modem. Um, or potentially, and I don't know if most of you guys won't see this, but NPCAP packet driver, um, that's for people using NMAP or Wireshark. Um, if you're using that program, you'll need that checked as well. On to power management. Make sure to have this here checked off. That's gonna. That's just another power management tool, as well as advanced EEE. We want this disabled. ARP offload disabled. Auto disabled. Gigabyte disabled. Energy efficient Ethernet disabled. Uh, flow control disabled. Gigabyte light disabled. Green Ethernet disabled. Um, almost all of those, except a few, are going to be a lot of the power uh, throttling, like power management options there. Uh, interrupt moderation, uh, I would probably just leave that at disabled. If you have a specific reason for um, how many interrupts you want the network driver to receive, uh, then you, you can go ahead and set that accordingly, but for the most part, probably just leave it disabled. But the o OS handle how much it's going to be uh, interrupted by. Uh, IPv4 checksum offload, we're going to want RX and TX enabled for this one. Um, you have to have this enabled for receive size scaling to work, and that's really something essential that you'll want to improve network performance. Uh, jumbo frame, let's keep that disabled. Um, you don't need that extra throughput. You're going to get more latency and a higher ping if you have like more than um, your MTU, which is roughly going to be around 1,500 bytes. Uh, anything beyond that, and you're looking at uh, drop packets. Large send offload and large send offload for IPv6. Um, you can keep both of those disabled. Maximum number of RSS queues. This is probably going to be default set to 4. Uh, if you're on Intel, it might be set to 2 by default, like an Intel uh, network driver. Um, there's a way to have a higher number set here. Uh, you probably don't need it. Um, especially if you're running AMD, but if you're an, on an Intel machine you, with 8 cores, you might consider doing 6 queues, and if you're an Intel machine with 10 cores, you might consider doing 8 queues. Uh, for AMD users, if you're not on the 5000 series, which is the, the newest CPU that was released, it might be a 5600, I, I can't remember exactly, but it's going to be like the very newest um, line of CPUs that was released by AMD. They actually fixed, or allegedly had fixed, but I'm pretty sure it has been confirmed that they have fixed the die problem on the cores where you're having uh, a die on both NUMA nodes and causing increased latency. Uh, that shouldn't happen on that new CPU anymore. Um, so having received side scaling on multiple CPU cores that kind of crosses that NUMA node threshold won't be a problem. But for your older AMD users out there, um, that extra latency in the die, you'll want to contain your side scaling um, cores to the same NUMA node, and that'll be a maximum of four queues. Uh, network address, we'll leave at not present. NS offload disabled. Power saving mode disabled. Uh, priority in VLAN, if you're using QoS, you'll want priority enabled, um, but most of you probably won't be using VLAN, uh, so uh, or QoS, so just leave both those disabled if that's the case. Receive buffers. Um, a quick rundown on what receive buffers are. Um, I'm going to skim a lot of it and basically just give you um, what you kind of need to know, which is the higher the value, the less dropped packets, but um, the more system memory is used. And the lower the number, the more likely you'll have dropped packets, uh, but less system memory is used. So take that information um, and do with it what you will. Uh, I personally recommend cranking the number as high as your system memory will allow. Uh, if you start to see issues with like performance in your games, if you're really throttled with system memory, um, then I would bump it back down. But 
I I really don't think unless you're like running two or four gigabytes of RAM, it's it's probably not going to be much of an issue. Um, so kind of just go as high as the network card will allow. Um, receive receive size oh geez, receive side scaling. Uh, we're gonna definitely want that enabled. Um, I've seen somewhere some places on the internet, certain like forums and stuff, are talking about internet settings that'll tell you to have it disabled. Uh, I really don't know why they would recommend this. Um, I I'll put a link a Microsoft form in the description uh, that really breaks down receive size scaling. If you guys have any questions about this. Um, but you're looking at overall total performance improvements because it's distributing it's distributing um, internet processing across multiple CPU cores, um, and that's just 100% better. Uh, I can explain why that's so much better, but um, probably you guys kind of understand why you know balancing on multiple cores is going to be a lot better for internet performance as well as game performance. Um, RSS load balancing profile. We've got a couple options here. Um, personally, I go with Numa scaling, um, but you could choose conservative scaling or closest processor. Uh, I run AMD, so for me, having Numa scaling is going to be the most beneficial um, because it's going to keep all my side scaling to one Numa node, so I don't have to crush that cross that die threshold. And uh, if you're going to do Numa scaling, don't do static um, because that's going to choose one Numa node and stick with that the entire time after it's chosen it. Um, and we don't want that happening because we want it to be able to dynamically allocate um, which Numa node it uses depending on how much performance those cores, uh, how much those cores are being utilized rather. Um, if you're playing a game and core, like your second Numa node or your cores uh, four through eight are being heavily, heavily ut utilized, um, you don't want to also do your networking through those cores um, because then you're going to have worse performance on the networking side and the game side because your cores try and run two things at once. Um, although that's a rare situation that you would run the game only on four cores, I think you kind of you guys kind of understand what I'm trying to articulate here, which is you want to be able to adjust which cores depending on how much utilization of that CPU or that NUMA node, rather that group of four CPUs, is being used. Shut down wake on LAN. We'll want that disabled. Uh, speed and duplex. Keep that on auto negotiation. Um, there's no real reason to specify which one you want to use here. Um, even if you know exactly what like speed the line's running and whether it's full or half duplex, um, it still doesn't really make sense to directly specify it because in case any of that changes in the future for whatever reason, whether you're changing a, a cable. Um, a modem, a switch, whatever it is. If something changes, then you have to know what changed and fix it if you start getting networking issues. Whereas an auto negotiation is going to automatically do all that for you. Um, so there's no real reason to manually set it. TCP checksum offload, both IPv4 and IPv6. Um, have those disabled. It's faster to do your offloading for checksum uh, for TCP and UDP on your CPU. Uh, you're not really saving much of a performance, um, especially when you're not doing large throughput. So s since we're doing gaming, most of it's not going to be super large throughput. We're not using jumbo frame. Hopefully, <laughs> anyways, we're not using jumbo frame. If you have that enabled, please disable that. I um, already talked about that. But um, it's not going to be large throughput. So you're really not talking about too much more CPU utilization um, to process that those packets and send and transmit those packets, but what you will see is you'll see a huge networking performance from letting the CPU actually do that work. So make sure you have both TCP and UDP for IPv4 and IPv6, depending on which one you're using, have all those disabled. Uh, transmit buffers, same deal with receive buffers. Um, we're gonna want to have like those higher, the higher that those transmit buffers go, the less dropped packets and lower, the more drop packets, and uh, also higher, more system memory, lower, less system memory, same sort of or ordeal. I would probably just try to push it as high as the network driver goes. Um, for me, my maximum here was actually 128. So you had to do, I had to do a little bit uh, editing in your in your registry 
to allow it to go 1024. The reason I have it 1024 here and receive buffer as 512 is um, there is some literature on doubling this transmit buffer. I uh, haven't really seen a good confirmation on that. The, the best I ever saw was um, uh, basically some literature from an internet, I think it was an internet company, or they were, I, I, it, they were somehow involved in um, like network engineering of some sort. And uh, they were, it was like a company, this wasn't an individual person. Um, and it, it was a company basically discussing re receive and transmit buffers. And um, they were saying obviously like the larger the buffer the better performance f and throughput for the, uh, the system. But also that the transmitting portion is actually larger than the receiving portion. Um, you like you're going to be transmitting more than you receive, basically. Um, and so having the buffer double is supposed to, I guess, in my understanding, allow for the fact that you're going to be transmitting more, and so you, there's more packets, so you're more likely to be dropping more. Uh, so you want to allocate more system memory to not have those packets dropped. I guess that's what they're trying to do there. So I'm, I'm assuming that's where the double the transmit buffer came from. Um, it's not really an exact number though, but I think it was it was roughly times two. Um, so that's something you could take away from it if you'd like to and, and double the receive buffers. Uh, VLAN ID, if you're not running VLAN, don't worry about this. Uh, wake on magic packet, uh, wake on magic packet when, I think this is like when system is off or something. Um, wake on pattern match. All of these, unless this is for whatever reason, you have this as like a um, remote computer and you're trying to like send a packet to it to wake it up. It's probably not the case if you're using this as your at home as your at home gaming computer. It's probably not what's happening. Uh, then you don't need any of those enabled. You can go ahead and disable them as well as uh, uh, wake on LAN um, and shut down link speed. Uh, same sort of or ordeal. If it's not a remote cert, like a remote computer that you're waking with a packet, like sending a packet, don't even worry about that. Just keep it off. All right, and moving on. Um, so we're going to go to our MSI mode, ut utility mode. Uh, this is version 3. You're going to get some extra information down here with version 3. Um, so I'd, if you're still stuck on version 2, I think version 3 is available online somewhere um, for you to find. So... You're going to want to have your MSI mode selected for your um, network driver. The likelihood is this will already be ticked in MSI mode. If it's not, I would be very careful swapping it over to MSI mode because it's likely it won't be able to actually run in that um, since it usually it's default put in MSI mode. Um, but it's probably diff somewhat different for different network drivers. Like I know most people's uh, GPU isn't in MSI mode, but a lot of them can run in MSI mode. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind. You're gonna wanna do a restore point or um, probably and, not or. Definitely do a restore point if you're going to be doing this at all. Um, but if you are questioning whether to do it, um, then like look up your driver, see if other people have said in MSI mode. Um, and see if they've been successful with that, but also do so the restore point too, just in case. You never know what could happen. Even if somebody has had your driver and they're like, yeah, it worked perfectly fine. You never know. You might be like one digit off in the serial number of the driver when you were looking it up, or you might have like misspelled it or something, and it's it's almost the same driver, but it's not quite, and you know, you, you put it in new MSI mode, and like it, it crashes your whole system instead of just like, you know, instead of the internet just being off, it just won't let your computer boot for whatever reason. Um, so make sure you restore a point. Um, the other thing here is you're going to see a limit of one and a maximum of four, um, at least for Realtek drivers. I don't know for the other ones, but I think this is pretty common across the board. Um, don't swap this limit number. Uh, I've tested it on this driver, um, and from what I've heard anecdotally for other network drivers as well, if you put this number above one and try to max out like it's um, MSI, uh, basically max amount of MSI messages, um, the the driver just gets wonky. Like you'll have huge packet loss, um, just nothing will work right. You won't be able to use the internet basically. 
So just leave it on um, whatever default that is. Uh, internet priority, I put mine in normal. Um, I think it was default set to high. I just put it on normal so it doesn't interfere with the priority of my GPU. So my GPU gets a little bit more priority when running games. Um, I don't think this is a huge deal. And honestly, you probably set it to interrupt priority of high, and just and it probably wouldn't make a huge difference as far as like both of them competing for high priority. But it is kind of a rule of thumb you don't want too many high priority devices because then um, then they're not really high priority devices. You know, if you go and set everything to high or most everything to high priority, then um, it's almost as if they're all just running normal priority. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too, and I haven't noticed any kind of performance loss when I set it to normal. Um, I've even set it to low and haven't really see th seen a difference. Um, so just something to keep in mind when uh, if you're going to start messing with these values. Uh, another thing we could you could potentially do if you really wanted to, um, and I don't really think this is going to improve performance a lot, but it is something to throw out there. Um, that you could set different uh, affinity masks for your driver uh, if you wanted to change you wanted to see if your DPC latency got any lower with any of those um, probably the best one here is going to be all close processors you don't want to do one close processor putting all your um, all your interrupts on one processor is going to make it really hard uh, especially since it's your internet interrupts and there's going to be a lot of them every time you receive or send a packet so one CPU core alone even if you had a really strong CPU like single core CPU speeds it's still going to bog that core down way too much if you want it multiple um, and you could try all processors in machine um, if you wanted I don't think that's going to work very well for AMD again because of the die issue um, it might work better for Intel um, I don't really know there's sort of NUMA nodes for a reason like those cores generally work better together uh, on Intel it's not as big of an issue but like if you're going from the very first core all the way across to the very last core there is going to be more time in between that versus going from um, the very last core to like the second to last core it's, it's literally just like distance is less so you have it's faster um, and like you think of a CPU chip it's really small like it's not very much space but in terms of I mean we're doing like you're doing microseconds here um, so every little bit does count um, and it, for that reason it might just be worth to not even mess with it and just leave it whatever the default is uh, the other thing you could do is actually set a specific NUMA node mask um, so this is would be like really situational um, but if you knew for whatever reason I don't know why you you would do this but like let's say like you're running your game on only NUMA node 2 I don't recommend doing this use all the cores you have to run your games but just as an example of a specific scenario where this might work but like for whatever reason you have four cores that are just completely open they're not doing anything um, then you could set this specific like processor affinity for that reason um, uh, so anyways whatever the reason is if you have a reason for setting an affinity all you need to do is just make sure to choose cores that aren't hyper threaded you'd like you'd want to choose your cores like say I'm going to use all, f all the first four cores uh, and numa node like one um, so CPC 0 don't choose hyper threading that'd be the second CPU no hyper threading third no hyper threading and the fourth you just want to make sure that you're not putting it on, on a hyper threaded um, core because you don't want that same core receiving two interrupts um, it's just not gonna <laughs> help it you're basically just giving it double the interrupts for no reason it's not it kind of defeats the purpose of distributing it to other cores um, so that's another thing that you could potentially do um, if you decide th that you wanted to add multiple RSS queues, I didn't. I, I talked about this, but didn't show you guys how to do it. I just want to go to your registry. Um, I'm hoping God that you guys know how to do that. But in case you don't, it's Control. It's a uh, Windows key R, and then Reg Edit, and then just click Enter, 
and it will pull up your registry. And we're going to go to local machine, system, current control set, control, class, and then you're going to want to look for, uh, excuse me, 4D. Okay, shit. It's going to be local machine, system, current control set, control, class, and then we're going to look for 4D and then 972. So 4D, 360, 972 is going to be your network driver folder. And then you're going to have multiple. Maybe you might just have one, but you will probably have multiple. All of them are going to look relatively like this if you're not using it, but there's going to be one in here that's going to have a bunch of different parameters for your network and that's going to be the one that you're actively using. All right. Once we go there, we're going to want to open this out further, go NDI, params, and then you've got all your parameters here, and we're going to want to find num RSS queues. Um, it might be titled something, something different like that, like similar. It might be like max RSS queues or something similar to that, but um, it's not just RSS. That's actually enabling receive size scaling we're going to look for a number of them um, and then we're going to open that folder and go to enum and what we'll do here is we'll add a string value and label it whatever number you're doing so five and six etc and then we'll label it we're going to give it a value data of five cues and this one would be six cues etc until you get to uh, as many cues as you needed um, you're going to want to leave two cores, like if you got eight, don't do more than six queues. If you got ten cores, don't do more than eight queues. You want to leave two cores open that aren't actively doing internet, um, like, uh, sorry, not internet, ever, that actively aren't doing a side scaling. Um, and again, for AMD, I wouldn't even really recommend doing this. Just uh, if you're doing ten, you could maybe do five queues, but... Um, probably still just leave it at four because I'm fairly sure you want an even number. And then um, if you're running eight cores, just leave it at four. You just you just want all of it within the same NUMA node. The only time I would uh, advise against doing that if you're running AMD is if you're running that new 5000 series. All right, so we're going to talk about MTU. So that's going to be your maximum transmission unit. Um, and to, it's probably going to be default set for you, but just to check here, this is what you're going to do to calculate it um, and actually figure out if you're running the optimal MTU setting. So you're going to want to ping some sort of site. Uh, we can just use Google as an example here. We're going to want to go to google.com and then dash F dash L. And then you're going to want to put your MTU size in. Um, I would just go ahead and start with 1472 because that's probably that's going to be your 1500 max um, and then kind of go down from there. Um, most of you guys will probably be running 1500, but just in case you're not, um, just move down if you see fragmentation. What you should see is this. It should go through, um, and it shouldn't have any fragments. If you're too high, like for example, if I set an MTU that's definitely like way too high. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? Um, if we set an MTU that's too high, it's going to be say, pack, packet needs to be fragmented, but DF set. If you see this and you see the 100% loss here, you don't need to see both. It'll just, this enough will show you that it's being fragmented. Um, then your MTU, like the MTU value you specified here is too high. So just bump it down, probably like in increments of 10, um, and you'll eventually find it. And then whatever, whenever you find the number, like say, um, say you do, I don't know, you bump it down from 1462 to 1462, right? And um, it works, like it goes through perfectly. Then what I would do is incrementally bump it up by one so you can find that perfect number. So do 1463, 1464, until you get fragmentation. And whatever number, like if 1463 doesn't give you fragmentation, but 1464 does, 1463 you know is your number, right? Okay, and then you're gonna add 28 to that number and that will be your MT. You gotta do 28 because of the header that has to be attached to it. Um, so whatever number you get here, add 28 to that and then you'll get your number. Um, and then what we need to do is go over to NetSH IPv4 show sub, oh it's actually, sorry. Show, so 
of interfaces here. And you just see all your interfaces. So you need to find which one you're on. Um, if you're running Ethernet, you'll be on the Ethernet interface. If you're running like wireless, it'll say some sort of wireless interface. Don't worry about loopback. You're not. It, this is not important for right now. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set your MTU to whatever number you just found plus that 28. So whatever that total number was, take that number. You're going to want to do net sh I, uh, int ipv oop, ipv4 and then you're going to want to say set and then whatever the name that you're setting is oop, actually I think you say set sub interface and then specify your MTU value like for me it would be 1500 and then do store equals persistent because you don't want this number to go away and then it's going to tell you okay um, if you type it in wrong or it'll, it'll, it'll give you some sort of error it'll be like it'll say like the whole line you typed can't be found or something similar to that if it tells you okay you've done it correctly and then if you want to double check you just go back to this show sub interfaces and it'll show this up into you if I change it if I change it from this 1500 1400 it'll show up as a new MTU so just keep that in mind um, and yeah hopefully that got that has helped you guys um, and any questions or comments um, please leave them down below and uh, subscribe and like the video uh, you guys have a nice one